All right, welcome back. Today we are doing another paid creations. This is the Constellation plushie set. This is by Bethesda. And since it's by Bethesda, it is achievement friendly. And it is 300 CC. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to put a timestamp down below. You can go straight to it if you want to bypass this. I need to discuss two things really quickly. And the first one is why I make these videos. I'm not actually really getting any flack on YouTube about this. I think it's fair that the people that watch this channel seem to have a very good understanding as to why I make the videos I make. But as I've been putting these elsewhere to bring awareness uh, about the creations, paid or unpaid, um, I've noticed a little bit of pushback on some of them, and I want to make sure people understand some things. I buy these mods myself. Uh, I am not giving them free. I have no ties to any of these modders. I don't work for Bethesda. I'm not getting kickbacks or or pennies per impression or something like that from the modders or from Bethesda by showcasing them. I just want to provide you, the viewer, a way to see this to see if is it going to be worth your money? Because pictures don't always show it. You know, you see a, a couple pictures of uh, uh, someone's hab set they did or someone's um, player housing they did. And that's great. And sometimes they take great pictures. Well, they don't always take great pictures. And sometimes the pictures just don't do it justice. That's why I have these on video. They are literally so that you can see if it's worth your money or not. Now, to be fair... I should try to be as uh, unbiased as possible in these. I do realize <laughs> that in the uh, Crimson Hab Fleet set, uh, I Crimson Fleet Hab set, excuse me. I I definitely was very excited to do it. I I I won't lie about that, and I honestly shouldn't have been. Not because it isn't a great set; it's 100% a fantastic set. But because I don't want to come across as a salesperson. I'm not trying to sell you these uh, mods. I don't care if you buy the mods. It's no skin off my back if you do or you don't. And I'm sure the mod author would appreciate you purchasing them. However, that's not the intention of the videos. Now, second, there have been a few who have questioned, I don't know, my loyalty or lack thereof to Bethesda in some of my uh, posts and I want to bring that to air I haven't really been forthwith in what I believe so I love Bethesda games I played them for a long time jank and all the whole quote bug Thesta um, but I'm I'm over giving billion dollar studios the benefit of the doubt for anything. I'm, I'm over giving them a pass for bringing out buggy, unfinished games. They have the resources to do better. They need to do better. That's, that is my position. So I am going to be critical of Bethesda and of Starfield, even though I still play it, even though I still enjoy it. That's it's just the way it is. Now, on that end, when I'm preparing for a video... I'm usually listening to music, I'm watching a movie, whatever you want to... Whatever kills the time as a preparation. Some of these videos take hours and hours of preparation before I can make it. But recently, I've actually gone back into listening to podcasts. It's kind of weird. Now, I want to state, I'm not sponsored by these guys, but I found a podcast that I think you all will like called Starfield Raw. They are... I would say as similar to me in my thought process in that one can separate the art from the artist. I can still enjoy a Bethesda game while being critical of the studio that makes it, right? And I think these guys kind of fall in line with that. It's three dudes. Uh, I guess they're buddies. Um, they talk about their own gameplay. One of the, the last one I listened to, I think it was 43. Uh, one of the guys was talking about how he got two legendary ship encounters in the same system. I just, I don't even know what the odds are for that to even happen. It's unbelievable to, be, I mean, okay, I say unbelievable, maybe he's a really good storyteller, but just, just 
how two in the same one? That's crazy. Anyways, I even learned something about lore. And I, I'm going to make a statement that is going to make some of you get out the pitchforks and want to want to uh, murder me in my sleep. I'm not a fan of Andreja. I'm sorry. I, I'm that guy that doesn't really like her. Uh, I think she's overly negative all the time. And I, I like Sarah better. I'm sorry. But I learned something about her in the, their latest podcast. I thought that was cool. Uh, learned maybe got a little bit more respect for her I guess the way to say it so um, maybe check them out Starfield Raw I was able to watch it for free on Spotify and I don't have an account I could not watch it on Apple without having an account so maybe if you have something there now let's look at these plushies and let's see if it's worth your 300 credits now when I say 300 basically you want to look at it from the perspective that it's one US dollar per 100 you can get them cheaper, however, that's just the roundabout. So this, these are the plushies. They are absolutely adorable. I don't know if they're three dollars adorable, but they are absolutely adorable, and they're quite large in size. They're not little bitty tiny plushies like you would think. I mean, they're almost half the size of Cora. I do like the little tiny Cora in front of Sam. That's cute. I place these with the decorate mode. I just put them in my inventory and drop them. And let me show you how you make them real quick. It's the industrial workbench. Not not too much on the materials, uh, but there's one material that you might have to do a little searching for. I remember I set up an outpost on a planet just to be able to get this material. So we're gonna pop in here. We're gonna go to the industrial workbench. And they are right down here, plushy. Uh, the no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking of a different object. So, fiber and ornamental. That's really not that too, not that terrible, and it requires very little of each in order to make. And that's that's your 300 uh, credits. Um, they they do work on display cases, just like it says up there in the uh, description. When I placed them on the display case, in fact, let's go ahead and do that so you can see. They kind of place randomly. Um, I wish I could choose how they place. Need a hand with something. Oh, come on. Do it faster than that. And plus your Vasco. That constant noise every time you touch them, pick them up, move them around, is it, it really gets annoying. I'm not going to lie. Alright, so let's come over to this display. And let's go to inventory. It is under P for plushie. And it does mix in with the other plushies. So uh, the one thing to note when you want to see them. Oh, it's not there anymore. It used to have a, uh, an apostrophe. All right. So we are going to. All right. So as you can see, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason how they place them. And when you stick them up like this, it does hide some of them. Like, you know, she's right there behind uh, Sarah. So it's, yeah. I don't know that I love them on the display case, but they're cool. So if I take some Vasco right here, go into my inventory. If I drop Vasco, I'm sorry, I have a lot of stuff in here. Uh, I pick up everything randomly I find out in the world so that I can uh, place it in where... Yeah, see, it has that little apostrophe by it. All right, so we're going to drop this. Now we're going to get into the decorate mode. Go to that, hit E, and let's, uh, let's stick him on this couch. Like he's just kind of hanging. All right. Actually, he's kind of literally floating. So collision isn't perfect for sure, but you can see they're they're not little. I mean, they're they're. I don't want to let me sit with him there. I mean, it's a good size plushie. Now, good size does that mean it's worth three hundred credits to you? Good size. I'll leave that up to you. 
Uh, I think they're nice. I don't know that they're 300 credits nice. Thanks for watching.